so Karthik, I know you are going to introduce us to our next guest. Uh, who do we have coming up next for National Robotics Week? Well, you know, we're going to do a little bit of a change of pace. You know, we're talking robotic dog, but you know, robots, I, I mean, we know robots are everywhere. There's applications in all sorts of industries, but I think sometimes you can be surprised on what robots are being used for. And our next guest is from one of the great first supporters or winners of the um, one of the Founders Award uh, a few years ago. So I'd like to welcome Aaron Prather, Senior Technical Advisor at FedEx, which is going to talk. He's going to talk to us about the use of robotics in the world of shipping to help you know keep pace and for worker safety. So welcome, Aaron. Hey, thanks guys for having me today. Thank you for being here, Aaron. And you know, thank you for joining us to celebrate National Robotics Week. And thank you to FedEx for being such a great longtime supporter of FIRST. That partnership has been a you know, as part of FIRST as long as I can remember. And even when I was a high school student, you know, FedEx was getting my robot, you know, to the championship and like across borders. It was like really great stuff. So I'd love to know what's your role at FedEx and how is robotics involved in your role? Yeah, hey, great question, Karthik. Uh, I'm the senior technical advisor for the technology research and planning team at FedEx. And my team really is the tip of the spear when it comes to new technologies. So that's where robotics really just falls into our lap. And we're always looking for new ways to use technology like robotics to help our employees, help our customers solve numerous types of problems that they're facing. So my team really gets to get in there and really play around with these new technologies like robotics. And, you know, speaking of the new technologies like robotics, we've gotten a bit of a sneak preview here, but uh, we know you have a new multi-axis sortation robot at your facility in Memphis. Can you tell us all the details? Because we, we got a bunch of robot nerds in the audience today and they, they want to know how this thing works. Oh, yeah. The, the, these guys we added actually last year before the pandemic hit. So they've been in the planning works for a long time. And quite frankly, thank God we have them because they have been awesome to have in our operations here in Memphis. A lot of folks might not realize is that Memphis is the busiest cargo airport in the United States. And we're actually thinking we might actually be the busiest cargo airport in the world after the final data numbers come in in 2020. But these robots are being used to actually sort our small packages. As packages come into our sort facility, they have to be inducted uh, into a scanner so we can find out where the next destination is going. So these robots are picking and placing the ro each package into the sorter. And as this video shows, as you can see that they're picking from pretty much a bin of packages as, as they come in. And these are very different types of packages from these polymorphic bags to individual letters to boxes and they're different colors, different shapes, different sizes, and the robots have to actually figure out on their own how to do that each time. So it's really amazing technology. Okay, well, this is impressive. And you, you said the magic words that the robot has to figure out on its own how to pick it up. So, um, you know, for our audience who they, they build their own autonomous robots that are do, doing these sorts of challenges, they'd love to know, like, uh, what types of you know sensing is it using? Is it using vision? Is it using proximity? Um, uh, AI interfaces? Any details you can give us here? Oh, it is using a lot of things, and the primary one is a camera-based system that is actually looking down on that bin to figure out what the next pick should be. So as it picks a package and it places the package, there's actually then another camera to make sure that the package has been placed correctly because as it goes into the scanner, it needs to be sort of aligned to hit the next belt down the line. So the robot's not only trying to figure out how to pick it correctly, it's got to place it correctly. And it's using camera systems for that. But also throughout the entire work cell, there's a bunch of other sensors that are making sure that the packages, how packages are coming in, making sure they're, they're coming in at a nice rate for the robot, making sure that the package has exited the cell correctly. So there's a lot of, of stuff going on that is, makes this a complete operation. Wow. And so when it's making the decision on, you know, which package to pick next, is it using, like, I, I'm assuming there's obviously an algorithm, but you know, like, in terms of priorities, is it closest package? Is it package that, you know, makes the least amount of mess in the stack? I, any details? That'd be, that's it, just so It's really, oh yeah, I mean, it is, it is really just trying to figure out what makes the best sense 
for the picture at that time. And you can see it's coming in at different angles sometimes, but it is trying to work itself down to totally clear that bin. And as you can see, there's more packages in line ready to come in. So it's trying to clear that bin as quickly as possible. And the algorithm is, is, is helping it figure that out. And then as soon as it's cleared, the, the sensor actually turns the belt on to fill it back up. So it, it's, it's a very interesting thing. And, and what's been great about these robots is, is they do learn. There is an AI learning algorithm. So as the robot sees new packages, it actually learns better ways of doing things. And that the, all the robots share the same brain. After one robot sees it, the whole system sees it. And then so it's actually the system has gotten faster over time. And we expect that the, these robots will just continually improve and keep learning as they see more of these package types. You know, it, it's really fascinating to me because I remember in my computer science class, one of the common problems that you have to solve is like an algorithm to if you were playing pickup sticks. You know, and it's like you, that's what's a very common question that students have. And this is taking that to like seven levels into the future and doing something that's solving a real world problem. So that, to me, that's really great. Don't you think this is so cool, Libby? It's, this is incredible. Just even watching that video work, I'm totally mesmerized by how it kind of figures it out. Um, now, of course, my, my background with the first robotics competition is mechanical. So my brain's going to that arm and just how much it can move. How many axes, what's, what is, how many axes is a robot? What's the degrees of freedom? I just want to dive into like how that arm moves around that box. Yeah, it's, it's a six axis robot. So, and What's great is is it's the is Kyle Motorman has made a great robotic arm, and what's really interesting is is this robot's been in use for a long time. It's actually you can find it welding things. I mean, it's such a versatile robot. It can be used for numerous types of applications, from welding to package picking to who knows what else is out there. So it's just a great robot that Yuskawa has provided to us, and we we really look forward to deploying more of these in our system. They're truly beautiful. Um, so you mentioned a lot about how it's it's learning and it's continuously improving. So is that unit entirely autonomous or is there someone in a control room taking a look at that one brain that they all share? Great question, Libby. 95% of the time, 99% of the time, the robots are fully autonomous. They're just chugging along, doing their thing. But if one of them comes across a problem, and it's like looking at its bin and it's like, I can't really figure out what I'm supposed to pick here. It can phone a friend and it will actually call somebody in a control room and actually saying, hey, look at this for me and tell me what I can do. And a person on the other end will look at what the robot's saying and say, hey, try that one. And they'll touch their screen and the robot will do its thing. And if it works, it proceeds on. And the person in the control room just sits there waiting for the next call. And it's a great system because, again, that now became part of the robot's learning. It has now learned how to do that. And, again, they've all learned it now. So uh, there's a lot of good questions coming from our chat right now. And there's a lot of excitement, too. I think my favorite comment is, I'd love me some beautiful automation. But uh, the question that goes along with it is, do the robots uh, run continuously? Like, what is the, what's the up? for these robots? Well, that they're based here in our, our sorting operation here in Memphis. They really work just during the sort times. And here in Memphis, we have two sorts. We have a day sort that takes place during the day, but normally between 10 a.m. to about 2 p.m., maybe plus or minus an hour, depending on just how much volume it is. And then there's a night sort, uh, again, about from 10 p.m. to about 2 a.m., give or take an hour, depending on volume. So there is about, there is some downtime and that's when our maintenance teams get in there and they'll check the heads, make sure everything's working okay. They'll they'll do a, a, a check of all the belts, make sure that the guys are doing great. And and what's really funny is you, you asked this question of, uh, of, of Master Sergeant Miller was, uh, do we name the robots? And actually the employees have named all the robots and sometimes it's a funny thing is, is sometimes they'll say, Sue had a little bit of an issue this evening. Can you check her head? And the technician's looking at that's like, which one's Sue? And because each one of them does have a technical number 
that they're supposed to go to. So it is sort of funny of, of the employees have named each one of them, uh, but the, our technical team, our mechanical team just sort of sees them as numbers still. So there is that, some of that confusion sometimes, but it is interesting is we have named our robots. Well, it probably shows that the people who are working with them have gotten attached to them a little bit. And I hope, I hope Sue had got a mental health break and was been able to be taken care of right there. Um, you know, uh, you've been working with these, you said, for about a year since just before the pandemic started. Have, what have been some of the coolest benefits in incorporating these robots into your center? Well, I mean, what's really done is 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 definitely helped our employees to spread out more. Uh, they can one employee can focus on several robots and work on that side of the facility with just those robots. Uh, we do have robotic team leaders that are monitoring the robots during the sort, and so we've uh, that's allowed us to spread out. Also, it's just helped us with the inundation of all these e-commerce shipments. All, everyone is ordering things now. And so the robots have really helped us of letting them do the pick and place of putting the, the packages into the sort system and freeing our employees to focus on some of the other things to make sure that our flights and trucks are getting out on time, making sure paperwork's done correctly. And when the robots need help, as I said, they will call saying, hey, I need some help over here. And then the employees can go fi fix that for them. And then they can go back to focusing on some of those other tasks while the robots are doing their thing. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Swiss Precision in our chat posted, that's quite a lot of hardware for some letters. How much energy does it use to run in this schedule you described? Not that much. Actually, we really did not have to upgrade the, much of the facility at all when it came to uh, electric supplies and all that. We did have to put in the install for the air tanks so that the suction could run and all that, but really the, the robots are not really draining the system that much. I mean, it is a huge facility, uh, but they are sorting, uh, each one of them is sorting about a thousand packages per hour. Uh, so it is a lot of packages that they're still processing for us each, each day. So as I said, four to five hours per sort, two sorts a night. So sometimes each, some of these guys are getting up to 10,000 packages each that they're inducting. So that's 10,000 customers that are having their packages touched by one robot. That is a lot of packages. And, you know, it's really interesting because, you know, on our first robotics teams, there's a lot of different skill sets that go in. It's a diverse team working together to solve a problem, but all throughout with robotics. I was wondering if you could comment maybe on some of the diverse skill sets within your plant of the people who are working with these robots. Oh, it runs the gamut. And, and this is what's so great about robotics is you don't need to be a roboticist uh, by trade. There's so many different skill sets that apply to this. Actually, we have mechanical guys, electrical, but there's also just the whole communication and, and talking about the robots and how the employees are going to deal with them, uh, training our employees. So if you have numerous different types of skill sets available to you and you maybe you're not strong on the electrical or mechanical, that does not mean there's not a career for you in robotics. There are so many opportunities work to work with robotics across numerous ways. Actually, I think that one of the best growing fields is, is actually people that can understand how a human and a robot are going to interact. With. What is that mental part? So uh, human robot interaction, I think there's a huge growing field for that of just how do we help our fellow human beings realize how they are going to work with robotics in the future. Yeah, that's, that's a great field. And I think there's something that a lot of, you know, the first students will have picked up on a lot throughout their career and something they can be really excited about going forward. Uh, you know, one final question here, and, you know, a lot of our teams, um, you're using a, a suction gripper on that robot. And suction has not always been the most successful in the competition space. So I'm wondering, um, why was suction chosen over the other types of possible end effectors, like a grabber or a roller or something like that? Oh, I mean, it really came down to just the diversity of our packages. I mean, we could have a little box like this. Then the next thing you have to do is pick up something this big, and then you got to pick up something this small. I mean, it really got gets crazy. And so suction just became the easier thing of just being able to come down, apply the suction, pull up the piece, and then place it down. So it really just came down to that, just the package diversity. 
and, and that makes a lot of sense because so often our teams are usually picking up the same object over and over again. So it makes sense why they would be going away from it. So that's just like, you know, there's always a good reason for these things. Things don't happen by accident. Aaron, thank you so much for being here. This was super insightful and super exciting. And, and once again, thank you to FedEx for all the generous support of, of First over the years. And we can't wait to see how robotics evolves in your facilities. And we can't wait to see you, more of you and your team at the next time we have a first in-person event. Thank you guys for having me and good luck to all the teams this year. Uh, looking forward to seeing some great stuff from you guys.